I've got to be honest, I am not really an artist. You may have noticed that from some of my drawings thus far, but I know people who are. And artists know that it takes some work on the front end in order to get the final result that you want, for the art to be complete, for it to look the way that you want. And PowerShell works exactly the same way. We're going to want to take our time and make sure that we put in the effort so that our results are sorted and formatted and grouped in such a way that we can find what we're looking for quickly and easily. Or others who view our scripts can do the same. Let's start by logging in as the administrator account on Win10-Nug and firing up the PowerShell prompt. So our big goal in this Nugget is to really focus on controlling our output, making sure that we can see the properties that we want in the way that we'd like to see them, even in the order that we'd like to see them. Before we jump into that, though, I'd like to pull over a park for just a second and talk about tab complete. We're going to be using the commandlet get-process. So at the PowerShell prompt, let's type in get-p and then I'd like for you to press your tab key. When you do so, what's going to happen is, based upon the amount of characters that you typed, it's going to search through the list of commands, almost as if you had done a get-command, get-p asterisk in the background. And so it was looking for all the commands that begin with get-p. The first one that it found in that list was get-package. And so when you type in, get dash p and press tab, it says, oh, maybe you wanted the first commandlet that begins with what you provided. Without pressing anything else, let's press tab again. So when we press tab again, it goes down to the next PowerShell commandlet in that list. Now the commandlet that we actually want to run right now is get dash process. So eventually, because get dash process does begin with get dash p, we will find it if we keep tabbing. There we go, get dash process. But you know what would have made this a lot easier is if we had provided a better prefix before we did our tab complete. So knowing that there's just a lot of commandlets that begin with the letter P, let's delete all that and this time just type in get dash pro tab. And there it is, get dash process. And in fact, keep pressing tab and you'll notice nothing happens. And that's because we provided enough of a prefix that there was only one result and therefore, this is the only commandlet that's available that's been installed into PowerShell. The reason why I wanted to take some time for this is because down the road, there's going to be some commandlets like disable dash net adapter encapsulated packet task offload. I don't know if you've ever learned German or Welsh, but that's kind of how they do a lot of their words. They just keep putting their words together without spaces and calling it a new word. And that can happen with PowerShell commandlets as well. But if all we have to type in is disable net and then tab, say, four times to get all of that written out for us, we've saved ourselves some time. We're done with our pullover and park. Let's look at controlling our output. Let's press enter after get dash process. So the default display is as a table with certain properties displayed. If we want to, we can always format output by actually piping our result set to a format commandlet. So let's type in get dash process once again. And this time we will use the pipe shift backslash and type in format dash and then just press tab and we can see the different format commandlets that are available to us custom, hex, list, we'll use that one a lot, table, that's the default here, and wide. Let's try wide and press enter. That displays just the names, but gives us multiple columns. And let's up arrow, press space, and I'd like for you to type in the dash after format dash wide, and then press tab. Here's a cool thing, without even having to go to get help, if we just want to see the list of available switches, we can actually tab complete between all the different options that are available. So in this case, keep tabbing until you get to the word column, press space, and then type in the number four and press enter. You can see, sure enough, that changes the results to displaying in four instead of the default of two. Let's type in get dash process. And this time we're going to format the results as a list. But just so you know, the format commands all have aliases. So format dash table list and wide all respectively have the aliases of FT, FL, and FW. And as in all things with PowerShell, it is case insensitive. So let's just type in FL after the get process and the pipe and press enter. And there we go, our results is a list. If we want to choose specific properties, we can use the property switch, which we could type out or as positional. It's the default value that'll be used and type in name, comma, CPU, comma, start time. 
And actually just type in start and press tab and you'll see that because what we're looking for are PowerShell property objects rather than just any old random text string, it's actually able to look that up from the PowerShell memory object and discover only the properties that are available. It's like it ran get dash member in the background to find just the properties that were available for us. Let's leave it with those three values and press enter. If we up arrow, let's change that to format list with an asterisk and press enter. And we can actually get all the properties of all the processes. That's a lot of info. When we display things in a table format, sometimes we need some extra controls. Let's up arrow back to our name, CPU, and start time, and change the FL to an FT for format-table, and press Enter. We can see our results. So far, so good. Let's up arrow and add another property to this. We'll type in company. So after start time, we have comma company, comma path, and then press Enter. So now it's doing its best to display all these results, but unfortunately, there's more text than it can show. So to overcome this situation, we're going to use the switch for format table called wrap. So let's up arrow and add a minus wrap and press enter. And now it adjusts that display based upon the number of lines we have. Now, one of the things we're going to want to do is take a look at the idea of being able to sort our results. Now, before we even get to sorting, our format commands have the ability to use a group by switch that can reference one of our fields. So let's group by and then reference the company field and then press enter. Now, when you look at the results, you may not be getting what you expected because we can see that we have a lot of things that were generated by Microsoft Corporation and a lot of things that were just that were generated by no company, but it seems to go back and forth. And that's true. Every time it finds a grouping, it clusters those together. However, it is not actually sorting first. And that's why we want to take a look at the ability that we have to sort the results. So let's up arrow. Are we sorting? before we get the process, after we get the process, but before we format the table, or after we've formatted the table. Well, you can't sort until you have something to sort. So we need to have it be after the process. But we want to sort before we display it so that the display shows up in the right order and things like group by actually start to make sense. So yeah, it's going to need to go right there in the middle. So if you haven't already, up arrow so that you have that last command in place. And let's get back to the pipe. I'm actually going to insert another pipe in a space and then get in between the two pipes and type in sort dash and then press tab and the commandlet is called sort dash object and then once again we're going to have to identify a particular field that we want to sort by so the switch for that is once again property in this case we were going to sort by the company field and it's going to assume to sort that in ascending order unless we put in the switch descending you don't need to do that right now but I just want you to see that let's just leave it with this so sort object by the property company, and then that sorted result set is what's then piped to the format table commandlet. Let's leave that in place and press enter. Now as we scroll up, our groupings actually look good. We see we have this first grouping that is completely blank, second group that has a company, but the company field is left empty, and then we have all of these that are from the Microsoft Corporation. So here's your challenge, my friend. I'd like for you to get a list of all of the services running on Windows presented in a table format showing its name, display name, start type, and dependent services. And oh yeah, I'd like that to be sorted and grouped by each service's status, whether it's running or stopped. Feel free to pause the video. When you're done making that happen on your own, join me and we'll take a quick look at that together. So to start off, our core commandlet is get dash service. There we go. And we wanted to get the results as a table. So FT, format table, that's actually the default. On that table, we just want to see the properties of name, display name, start type, and dependent services. All right, there's those results. But I also wanted it grouped by the status. We can see that result, but of course, they're Every time the status changes, it creates another grouping. So that's why pretty much any time you want to group by status, you're going to first want to sort by status. So we'll put in between the pipes, sort dash object. And by the way, the built-in alias for sort dash object is just the word sort. We'll indicate that we want to sort by the property of status and then press enter. 
Here's our list of running services. And before that is our list of stop services. For bonus points to make it even easier on the eyes, we can sort by more than one property. If we go back up and add after status, name as a secondary sort, we can get those result sets back in place and it's still grouping by whether they're stopped or running, but now within each of those, we go back to being in an alphabetical order, which is probably the way that we'd like to see it. Well, my friend, by going through this nugget together, you've dug in deeper into the world of formatting your results, format table, format list, format wide, specifying properties, getting that wrap on a table, and getting those results organized by using grouping and sorting to help display things the way that we'd like. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to 